Hey, this is Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today I'm going to show you how to upgrade your 7 8 inch handlebars to oversize 1 and 1 8 inch handlebars on your dirt bike. Handlebar choice makes a big difference in rider comfort and control, and that's why we're going to show you how to upgrade your 7 8 inch bars to 1 and 1 8 inch oversized bars. Now, I do realize that a lot of bikes nowadays do come with the oversized bar stock, but if you have a bike that still has the 7 8 inch bars, some of the reasons you'd want to switch are these bars are going to give you a lot more strength, especially down here by the clamps, and throughout the entire bar, they're actually tougher. So that means if you do crash the bike or tip it over, then these bars are less likely to bend. Now, the other cool thing about them is these bars, some of them actually allow for some more flex. So what that means is you're gonna have reduced rider fatigue. Now on the other hand, if you like a bar that gives you more feedback and a little more rigid, you could try something like the Renthal Twin Wall. Now for most people, I would say a standard oversized bar is where you'd wanna start. But if you don't know what you like, then try riding your buddy's bike, see if they have a setup you like, and also watch our Handlebars 101 video. That's gonna give you a lot of info on how to select the correct bar for you. Now to help you update your 7 8 inch bars to oversized bars, we offer convenient kits on the website for pretty much any bike. Just type in your year, make, and model, and you're gonna have a couple different clamping options, and that's why it's important to type in what year, make, and model you have. So this style, this is a removable bar clamp, and you're just gonna reuse the stock rubber bushings with it. But this other style right here, this is made if you have a triple clamp that has the bar mount as part of the triple clamp, you're gonna to have to install this style of adapter and it's actually gonna raise the bar up just a little bit. So that's something to keep in mind. You might wanna order a shorter bar if you have this style of triple clamp. So once you've decided what you need, don't forget about your grips because a lot of times your grips are gonna be glued onto the handlebar and when you try to take it off, it's probably gonna tear the grip. And what we have here is some Tusk dual compound grips and ODI lock-ons. We're actually gonna be upgrading our roach to racing bike. It's an 05 CRF 450R. We already tore the bike down and we're in the process of rebuilding everything and getting it how we like it. And then we're actually gonna go race it. So what we decided to do on that is we decided to put these ODI podium bars, these are the CFT, that stands for Controlled Flex Technology. Now, this is an oversized bar that still has the crossbar right here. So the crossbar, this is gonna give us more strength, but it still allows the bar to flex. And that's what the Controlled Flex Technology part of this is. It's gonna reduce vibrations and rider fatigue. So again, for the Roach bike, we're doing the podium bars. We're gonna put these ODI lock-on grips on and then so we don't get any Honda thumb, we're gonna get the grip donuts on there and we'll be replacing the zip ties that hold our wires in place. To do this job, we really just need some common hand tools. We've got our six millimeter Allen key, we've got some eight and 10 millimeter combo wrenches and some T-handles. We also have a screwdriver, rags and safety glasses. All right, now we're ready to do this. So to get started, we'll take off this crossbar pad. So with that out of the way, we've got these cable ties on ours, so I'll cut those off. And now we can remove all these levers. So I'm gonna start at the kill switch, and I'm gonna remove this screw all the way. When you take this off, pay attention to how everything was routed, because we'll wanna put everything back in the same order. After that, we'll remove the clutch perch. After that, I'll loosen these bolts on our throttle. Then I'll mo move over to our front brake master cylinder. And I'm gonna zip tie the master cylinder in place, that way we don't drop it. So after that, these mounts on the bottom, these are a 17 millimeter nut on ours. So we'll go ahead and loosen and remove these nuts. With that part done, I'll go ahead and loosen these clamp bolts for the handlebar itself, and we'll remove those bolts all the way.
And we'll just slide this throttle tube off and remove the bar. We'll remove these lower clamps. And you'll need to be careful with these rubber pieces. Sometimes they'll stick in there pretty good. Sometimes they'll fall right out. So you've got some on this bike, we have them top and bottom. So just be aware of that. And we will be reusing these. So now we're ready to put these new oversized clamps in. To do that, we'll take the top piece off. And then where this bolt is offset, you can see that the bolt is closer to this side right here. So we want the bars to be more forward. So we're actually gonna run this longer length right here towards the front of the bike. And we'll go ahead and slide those down into place and we'll take the nut and just loosely install that right now. After that, we'll take our new bar and I'm actually gonna remove this crossbar pad so we can actually see the marks to line the bar up where we want it and it'll make it easier to bolt everything down. So we'll take the bar and set it into place and then we'll take our clamps and set them into position and tighten these bolts down just a few threads. So with everything loosely in place, we'll get this pretty close to where we want it and we'll tighten it down just enough so that the bar isn't moving on us while we tighten anything else. And when we do this on these particular clamps, we'll make sure we have an even gap on the front and back. And then we'll tighten up the nuts on the bottom of these clamps. Then I'll go ahead, I'll do the final torquing on these top clamps right here. And we're just getting these to where they feel snug. You don't have to go crazy with them. And now we'll install our new ODI throttle tube. So what we'll do now, we'll tighten up our cable adjustments. Now we can slide the cover back over the throttle housing. And then I'll go ahead and install the front brake master cylinder. And then these Honda clamps, most of them are designed. This has the up arrow. Usually you'll tighten this top bolt first and then the second bolt. Go ahead and snug these bolts down. Okay, the next thing we'll do, we'll take our ODI grip and we'll slide it into place. What's nice about these ODIs is they just lock on. You don't have to mess with any glue or wire tie, that kind of thing. Then we'll snug this screw down a little bit. Reinstall the clutch perch. And our clutch lever is pretty bent, so we're going to replace that while we're in here. So after that, what we're going to do, we'll take our kill switch and this thing, it's gonna go on the other side of this clutch perch in between the grip and the clutch perch. So after that, we'll route our zip ties where they need to go. And then we'll rock the bars side to side and we'll make sure that our wires or cables aren't hanging up on anything. Clip the ends of the zip ties and then we'll install the crossbar pad. And that's all there is to updating your bars to oversize. Now we can take this bike out riding and make any final adjustments. If you need this kit, it's available on our website, so check that out. And if you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have a ton of other helpful videos on there. Thanks for watching.